London, Paris. It's all about a touring supermarket. Big tour, big screen, big <laughs> lemon. Pop Mart is here and you can get a front row seat at the opening night of U2's European tour, only on MTV's Weekend Edition. You know those people you always thought? Welcome back to this very special Weekend Edition from Rotterdam as we give you a VIP ticket to the start of U2's Pop Mart European tour. Coming up, more from Larry, Bono, Adam and the Edge and the fans give us the verdict on the show. But first, here's U2 with Gone. Famous Paul McGuinness, manager of you too. Does this make you feel really proud when you look at this and you're thinking, my God, my band's playing here t tonight and, you know. Well, it is very exciting. And we all, you know, as these tours run on, we all go on to a kind of different body clock. And mm -hmm. the exciting part of the day is nine o'clock and you try and build your own energy to coincide with that time. So you're living on band time. And so after the show, at midnight, you're still absolutely wired and can't possibly think of going to sleep till, say, four in the morning. Yeah. So what we like to do after a show is get, actually get on the plane and fly to the next city and um, so that you're checking into a new hotel at three or four in the morning and starting to think about sleep. What a life. So how are you doing now? Good. Yeah, looking forward to some more shows. Looking forward to getting back to Europe and playing in front of a European crowd. Yeah, because after three months of, of Port Martin in the US, it's finally arrived in Rotterdam. Mm -hmm. um, what are you expecting of tomorrow's show? Or tomorrow's show? Um, I think an all-round kind of party atmosphere. You know, I, I think uh, in the States, you know, they, they have seats and they're very organized. And, um, you know, they're great audiences to play to, but there's nothing like playing to a kind of festival audience which you get in Europe, where people are there to have a really good time. And, you know, I think people here will react to the new material in a, in a way that's um, more familiar to them and to us. Mm -hmm. So it's, it'll be exciting. This is, is about the songs in the end. It's not so smart arts, it's not a big high concept deal. This is, you know, four guys in a band in the end playing their tunes and a lot of the hype around the 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 concert is about the opposite it's about all the you know the, it's about our 40 foot lemon which we're very proud of um and the chicks love the lemon but uh but it's not it's about the songs we're having a lot of fun with the, the tour because we're we're zoo tv was very i suppose heady it was it was a lot of concepts whereas this this show is really about celebrating just some great songs and uh, having a laugh with some amazing uh, new technology you know, with, with our audience. It's not as complicated a concept. And when you see the show, you know, we're, we're really we're enjoying a lot of the new songs. We're also playing a lot of the old songs. Just trying to create a real intimate feeling in, in a very big space and using technology to try and do that. We're five guys who have spent nearly 20 years or 20 years, if you like, in each other's faces and in each other's pockets and in each other's homes. And we're all quite expert at this stage, not only at being friends, but also at staying out of each other's way. Yeah. And I think um, the reason why they are still successful is that they don't repeat themselves creatively. I keep making a better record each time they go in to make one. Well, the album Pop sees the band exploring the world of dance music with the help of a very special man who's none other than Mr. Howie B. How are you? I'm alright, how are you? Yeah, very it's well. Good. It's Glad a bit you... mad out there, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's like, it's like herds of people charging in. It's crazy. Over there's crazy people just charging in. When did 
you first meet you two? And when, when did you first start working with them? Uh, about three years ago I met them. Uh, and it was working with Bono on this song called Hallelujah that he did. And I remixed that for him. Then after that, I uh, worked with Bono and all of them on uh, the Passengers thing and Brian Eno did that. And then after that, just carried on playing with them. So sort of like, just kept playing around with them. Did the pop album and now I'm out here DJing with them and producing them. What made you want to tour with them? I mean, that's something completely different, I'd say. I, I was just like, being somewhere like this. This yeah. is like, I've never been involved with something this big before. So to get involved with this, to DJ to so many people, and also to like produce the sounds. It's like, so I've been on that and doing a bit of live cutting and stuff with them, playing and just getting, walking into a new arena. So that's what the challenge was. You make the music go black, you hear Satan speaking. What's so special about how he been? How long do you have? He's just, he's, a, he's just a very, a very cool guy. I mean, not only from a, not only is he cool musically, he's just, he's a good guy to have around. This little Scottish guy, and I um, love him to death. He's, just, he's very cool. He's now a pop star, you realize. Harry B is now a pop star. How he's become a pop star. How he's become a pop star. Not a pop star. <laughs> no, I don't, no, I haven't become, I don't know. It's, it's not me that makes that decision, but no, I don't. That's a funny question. There you go, I've totally climbed up there. <laughs> One city that has always held a special place in U2's heart is Sarajevo. The band's satellite link-ups on their Zurepa 2 approved just that. And now they're taking Pop Mart there. I don't know what I to say to you. I hope you'll enjoy your concert tonight. But you should realize that your politicians are letting you and us down. Yeah. Thanks for taking the time out to talk to us. We are ashamed to be European tonight. We've been trying to play Sarajevo for, for a long time. Um, and the, the interesting thing about it was that they didn't want us to play a charity gig. I mean, we offered our services free. We said, look, we'll go, we'll do a stripped down gig. You put up the stage, we'll play it. What they wanted was the whole kit and caboodle. They want the 40 foot lemon, they want the big arch, they want the, they want the, you know, they want the whole deal. And I think it's because the people of Sarajevo, I guess like the people of Bosnia Herzegovina, are tired about hearing themselves on the news and tired about being seen as an embattled community on the fringe of Europe, which of course is what they were. But they were also one of the most sophisticated uh, uh, cities in Europe great sus on music and really smart uh, people and and they just want a gig they just come and treat us like any other city and and that's what they want that's what they're gonna get now you've heard what you two think but let's get the verdict on pop mart from the people who matter the most the fans what do I think of Bono yeah. he's nice <laughs> it was excellent. The show was absolutely brilliant, and you two are running, mate. They are wicked. Chicks love the lemon. I love the lemon, really, really, really. You two is okay. It's the best, really. I love it. Woo, it was great. <laughs> I love it. It was new for you too, I think. I think they were trying to be young. Yes. Um, yeah. Attract the younger public. The thing that I think is confusing for some people about you too is that m music used to be about tribes. You know, you had uh, metal tribes, you had club culture tribes, you had people who were into techno, people who were into, you know, blue jeans, rock or whatever it is, and they're all in their different tribes. And this is true all over the world. But the 90s and the late 90s is not about tribes because it's about mixing it up. Okay? Yeah. People have a, you know, a Smashing Pumpkins record and they have a, a Chic record. People have a, 
uh, an Oasis record and they have a Chemical Brothers record or they have a Howie B record and it's all getting quite mixed up and pure pop, even the Spice Girls record, you know, a rock fan will go out and buy a pure pop group and that's really cool and our band is that, we're all these things. <laughs> very special Pop Weekly Edition from Rotterdam in Holland. Even better than the real thing, you bet it is.